Hey SketchUpers, it's Aaron. So one of the things that I've shown in some of my videos is the concept of organic modeling. A lot of people push back and don't realize that uh, organic modeling is possible inside of SketchUp. A lot of times that we show organic modeling, we talk about extensions, things like sub D or artisan to get those smooth flowing shapes. Um, it does make it easier. If you're going to do a lot of organic modeling, I highly recommend taking a look at some of those extensions. Uh, but it's not the only way to do it. There's actually, it's pretty easy to get some decent, smooth, flowy shapes using just native tools. So I want to take a look at that right now. And right here I have a motorcycle gas tank that I modeled in SketchUp using just native tools. So we're going to run through how I created this right now. I'm going to look at uh, reference images I imported. Uh, I want to talk real quick about how I set up to do it and then actually show you how I did it. So. The first stuff is pretty simple. I brought in this 2D image of the motorcycle and it had a shot of the tank. So I went through and just traced the tank from three sides. So from above, from the back, and then from the side. I took those three shapes then, I grouped each one, and then I just lined them up. I used a combination of move and rotate to get them lined up like this. So. That kind of gives me, uh, if I look at it from each side, it shows me what that tank looks like. Now what I need to do is I need to actually take this shape, this profile, and basically resize it for the top and the side view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this so that it is the correct size for right now for where it hits right here on these two shapes. And then I'm going to push pull it down a little bit, resize that surface push pull again, resize that surface. I'm going to work my way right down the tank, push pulling and scaling. So first thing I'm going to do just to make, my, make this easy on myself is I'm going to put some extra lines in here. I'm going to come up here to where these two groups intersect right here and I'm going to draw a line straight down to the bottom side. I'm going to draw one more line right here out to where it intersects this profile right here. So I'm going to zoom in make sure I get the edge. So those are my going to be my reference lines. Um, whoops. So I didn't worry about putting a line on this edge right here because I'm not worried. It's going to be symmetrical. The left and the right are going to be the same. So I'm actually do a symmetrical scale to pull the sides in from either side. So I went ahead and I already did that actually. I, I put all those lines in there. That's a boring thing to watch. So I did it while you weren't looking. I was sneaky like that. All right, so what I have now, this is my basically my reference cage. You can see here's all of my lines and how tall I want it to be vertically is measured by this line and how wide I want it to be is measured by this line. So what I'm going to do is take this surface and explode it. I don't want that in a group anymore. And I'm going to use push pull. And this is actually, this gets a little tricky because my lines here, these lines actually end up getting in the way and splitting my surface. Look what happens if I try to push pull here. So I'm going to take one more step. I'm going to grab all of my lines, grab everything, deselect my group and my group and just click around on that. So now I have just my reference lines. Make sure I get the one on the bottom too. Nope. Grab that. All my reference lines selected and I'm going to put them in another group just to isolate that geometry. Now I can come into this shape right here, click on, oops, I didn't get that one. All right, there we go. Click here and I'm going to pull this one out to this first spot. Now, now that it's here, I'm going to select this face right here and I'm going to do scale three times. Scale first, I'm going to pull down to the top, then I'm going to look underneath and see if I have to scale up. This actually has a large flat section where I'm not going to have to scale up very often. And then I'm going to come on the sides. And the sides, I'm actually going to hold on the modifier key. This is option on Mac, control on Windows, and I'm going to pull that in to that point right there. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Push, pull, click, drag this out to the line, click, and then with it still selected, scale, and then pull down, and then pull horizontally with the modifier key to scale uniformly, 
to this point right here. I can actually do this to this first side too. This is actually a little bit too big, so I'll go ahead and scale. And I'm pretty close to the top on that one. My sides do have to come in. So modifier key and snap that into the point. So you can already see it kind of taking shape. It's already, so you got a little bit of a bulge there coming around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. Let's select the end surface, push, pull, click out to here. Scale vertically, horizontally about the middle. And I'm gonna do it real fast right now and just work my way right down to the end. All right, I'm down towards the end now, and this next piece is gonna to have to start stepping up. You can see that this was continuous plane down here because I didn't move anything. So before I pull out the next one, I'm gonna actually hit the modifier key option and click here and pull that out to the next piece. That's gonna mean that I can take this one and as well as scaling like I have before, top down and then sides in about the middle. I can also grab this bottom and pull it up ever so slightly. To start giving that, you can see there's that break where that became its own new surface. A couple more push pulls to get out to the end. And this time, top, sides, and bottom. And then here on the end, just to get this, I'll probably pull it out one more time. And then see right, right before the end, just so I have a little bit of something else to snap to. And then scale it one last time to give myself a taper down to almost completely down to nothing. like that. And then I'll do the same thing real quick on the front. This of course is going to immediately, uh, I'm going to be pulling this up right away in the bottom because the, the shape is more uh, extreme here at the front. And there we go. So from there I can triple click, pull that shape away from my uh, control geometry. And the final piece, of course, to smooth it all out is to go to Soften Smooth Edges and crank that up to the point that we have a nice, even uh, surface. My issue right now that I'm running into, I do have a couple of surfaces inside here. So I'm going to grab this piece right here, temporarily hide it, and delete these internal surfaces Oop, and a little internal line there. These are where I had to create new geometries. Um, there we go. Go to edit, unhide all, triple click again, re-soften that, and uh, ooh, ooh, there we go. Nice, simple, smooth. It took, it took a little bit of time to create that mesh, We're moving one at a time, but uh, yeah, no extensions used, and I got a pretty nice, smooth, very usable uh, mesh created solely using SketchUp native tools. So hopefully you like that. Hopefully that's something that maybe there's a part of your workflow you could use that for. Um, this is a pretty simple shape. You could use more complex shapes. Uh, the big thing is it's a question of how often you want to do that push-pull resizing. Uh, the more often you do it, then the tighter mesh you're going to have, the more smooth. If you do it less often, it's going to go quicker, but you'll just have a less dense uh, three-dimensional mesh be just bigger pieces and that all comes down of course to how you're going to actually use this geometry once it's created so if you did like that give us a like if you want to see more videos like this click subscribe down below then you'll be notified when these come out we put two to three videos out every single week so good stuff if you want to see more SketchUp go ahead and click subscribe. Most importantly of all though, please leave a comment. If you like this, didn't like it, you know of a different workflow or a different method that you want to see highlighted on a video like this let us know in the comments down below. Like making these videos, like making them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.